You guys are awesome. We have gone above 900 subscribers, but still over 80% of you have not subscribed to the channel. It's so easy. Please just press the button and we want to build to a, a thousand people. So please just hit that button. Just hit it. Hit it. And then maybe leave a like as well. Okay, enjoy this video. This is today's Q&A. <laughs> Good morning from the UK and welcome back to another video. So today is going to be our Q&A as I discussed in the last video and I've picked out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven questions that you guys asked and I thought would be great to answer in this video. So I hope that you enjoy. Drop this video a like and subscribe and uh, let's get straight into it. Right, question number one. What ages do I recommend joining the Royal Navy? Now. It's quite a broad question because you can join, I think it's up until like, it's, it's in its 30s anyway. I can't remember the exact age that you can join up until. But I joined from 16 years old. And if you're someone who, you know, has done, done with school and you just want to get on with your job and have a bit of purpose, but you're still learning as well, then I recommend joining when I did. But it's not for everyone. It's definitely a learning curve when you get there, uh, especially if you're more into, you know, just going and doing what you want in those younger years and you're enjoying that than just stick with that because the discipline and all of that stuff that you'll get involved with when if you join the navy or any of the armed forces may not be your cup of tea and you'll probably end up regretting your decisions but if you're looking for something like a career driven goal or something like that from a young age then the navy is definitely one of the best ways to go because you can get in and within some of the roles you can uh, progress through your career very quickly uh, if you're keen to do so and um, yeah, I've, I just found it really good and it's a really good building block in my life and it set me up, I think, for life. Basically, I recommend doing it if you fancy the military lifestyle and it is a lifestyle, it's not a job. I have, I have um, mentioned this before, but yeah, it, it's definitely a lifestyle and not a job and you have to embrace that. Whatever age you decide to come into, you're gonna have to change your lifestyle to fit around this because you are gonna be spending a lot of time away from your families and friends and from your home to adopt this lifestyle, not a job. So whatever age you decide, just remember it's a lifestyle, not a job, and you've got to, be, you've got to put all of yourself into it. So for me, I would say the younger the better, but that is up to you guys. Number two, what role is best? Well, obviously I'm gonna say ETWE, Engineer Technician Weapon Engineering Branch is the best, God's branch, but um, it's really up to your preference. Uh, I mean, the careers office might try and have to sell you uh, into some ways depending on what the quota is for that year I suppose for recruitment if we're desperately in need for engineers or whatever it might be warfare specialist seam specialist whatever it might be they might try and drive you towards that um, sort of career path but there are, there are literally jobs for everyone so like I've got engineering so I'm working you know I'm working electrical computers and working with weapon systems and what sort of stuff then you can go to the uh, marine engineering uh, side of it which is with the engines and propulsion and power for the for the ship so if you're that way inclined you know you like working on uh, cars and stuff like that then this is like a bigger car that floats <laughs> I suppose um, and generates power for the whole ship if that's your way that of um, you know your way of working then I would recommend that We've also got warfare specialists who, you know, are, are doing the plotting and then they're, they're technically on the gun sort of thing. So, you know, you'd be expected to do different things. There are lots of different, lots of different branches and you can, you can actually, once, if you're in one and you're not happy, you can transfer to another branch as long as you qualify for that. So, for example, an engineering role is going to be, you're going to have to pass a test to get in there. So for example, on your psychometrics test, you're gonna to have to get a higher score to qualify for an engineering role just because of it's just more complex. Um, and you may have to do that when you transfer over. So just bear that in mind, because if you can't pass the test, then unfortunately you, you can't join the branch. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all about your preference. If you like getting hands-on, stuck in, oils and greases, all that sort of stuff, ME, if you like working with weapon systems, computers, electricity, all that sort of stuff, WE, if you like shooting guns, bloody warfare specialists, seamen specialists, you know, all of those sort of things. Um, so yeah, it's, it's entirely up to you. Do your research. If you've got any questions, drop me a comment. I'm guaranteed I will um, reply. Okay, moving on to number three. Hardest part mentally and physically of training. Right, so this is gonna be on basic training. So like I said, 
when I did H, when I did basic training, so HMS Rally, um, I was 16 years old. Um, the hardest part for me was mentally was the, I remember the very first day I had a massive migraine because we'd done all the travelling and um, I had the medical as well. I was really dehydrated and we'll come on to the medical part later. But um, I was really dehydrated, I had a massive headache, just stressed out because it was completely new. Everything's getting chucked at you, but it, you know, it will settle down for a little while. So like, you just got to get used to the first hit of getting there. Loads of stuff's going to be chucked at you. It's completely new. Um, and yeah, you just got to just get, get over it. Um, but the men mentally part, I reckon throughout the whole thing is going to have to be just the lack of sleep or maybe the amount of work to sleep ratio. <laughs> so yeah, that's why you, it's always important just to keep on top of your kit when you get there, uh, get everything done as soon as possible. And I said this to someone who was commenting and uh, talking to me through direct messaging and basically they're gonna just chuck some care balls in at you and it's gonna seem like crap at the time. Let's be honest, it's gonna seem crap and you're like, why have they done this? But it's best just to get on with it um, because the sooner all of you embrace that sort of mentality, then the sooner you'll just get through training and it will be over and done with. Really, at the end of the day, I quite enjoyed it. It's, <laughs> but yeah, um, you know, it's it's just it's just a training phase. Uh, physically, oh, so rope climbs was a funny one. I'd never really done rope climb before before I got to rally. I remember doing it for the first time and just using all upper body strength. I was like, oh God, I'm pulling up, and then the next the next day, I woke up and my entire torso was just <laughs> so sore. So um, it's just learn. So I'm gonna say learning new stuff, like new things I hadn't done before. Um, so you do like stretch runs and all that sort of stuff. You know, you, you don't tend to do that in your in your commercial gym. So that was definitely new for me. Um, and yeah, it was just getting used to these new physical things that you were doing. Um, obviously, like firefighting, never done that before. So wearing all the suit and all that sort of stuff and moving around and firefighting that was a physically challenging because I'd never done that before. Um, so yeah, it's, it's embracing the new things physically and mentally and, and just adjusting yourself for those things. Okay, number four. What were the running sessions like? So this is gonna be like your camp circuits, camp sprints, um, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's definitely something to adjust to. I never thought I'd be running bloody, was it 400 meters up, down, back up, down, or whatever, I can't remember how long, long it is, but. Yeah, it's, it's like I said, it's, it's there to test you and challenge you and it's there, basic training is there to get you in the shape that you need to be in, to be in the Royal Navy. I mean, obviously I've changed quite a lot since being in the Navy, but it happens as long as you can pass your fitness test, then that's fine. Um, but yeah, they were, like I said, it's challenging. It's, it's the same with the last question. It's, it's designed to be challenging. It's designed to test you um, to see where your limits are and what you can do. And you are being assessed almost at every opportunity. So just uh, keep that in mind. Uh, and at all times, think of it as like a 10 week interview, <laughs> but you're testing everything. So bloody physical, they're looking at your uniform every day. You know, you're gonna have divisions, all that sort of stuff. So just make sure that you're on your best form. Um, running sessions, some of them aren't as bad as the others and you'll probably consider them more of a rest period. So yeah, just give it all you got all the time and uh, you won't you won't fail basically. You'll just, just keep together and uh, you'll be fine. Okay, number five, what is the medical like? So when I got there, I had my, uh, when I got to rally, I had my medical straight away. So literally got in and I'm going to tell you a little story. So we got in, had to go take uh, our blood test. It's basically like a general sort of thing and they look at what sort of vaccinations you have. And I can't remember if they gave us vaccination the first day or within that first week, but you do get some vaccinations if you haven't had them before or you need an update. But the first thing was just like a general blood pressure and then they took my blood. And like I said earlier, I was so dehydrated from the train journey and obviously I was excited and stressed, you know, sweating all day, it was disgusting, but <laughs> got there, hadn't been drinking much water, got down on the, lied down on the bed and uh, I remember him asking, you know, where do you live? And I answered him and he was like, oh, do you remember, do you remember this number? I was like, yeah. And then he said, uh, so what's your date of birth? And I 
started saying it, I was like, 10th of, and then I just dropped out, <laughs> passed out, and I woke up, and I was like, swiping, I was like, where, where am I, where am I, and this guy was standing there, like, laughing, and his, his mate went out and got uh, got me a little drink of water, so I had that, and I was like, what, what happened, he was like, oh, you just passed out, but don't worry, we managed to get your blood, <laughs> so that was a bit funny, um, but yeah, it's literally like a blood test, a general check, and like I say, they're going to check your vaccinations, and all that sort of stuff. Um, like it was it's about seven years ago now, so I can't if it's changed then it's changed, but that's what it was like for me. So just prepare for like a general checkup. Um, and yeah, it's you know the, the the medical assistants and staff in there are really nice. You know, you talk to them. You know, you, you will be nervous, but just break the ice. Just you know, ask them things. Maybe they'll answer, and then they'll ask you stuff. You know, and just just get chatting with people. It's probably the best thing you can do, and it's the best thing you can do with your class as well. Just get in and just be open and just chat with everyone because as soon as you make bonds, the easier it's going to be. So yeah, medical standard sort of stuff for me was a bit of a nightmare, but we move on. Right, question number six is how much storage do you have on board? I think the person also asked, could I fit a guitar? Uh, so obviously you get different sizes of ships. Uh, the larger ships you get a bit more storage with. Um, so like on a Type 23 frigate, you'll probably get like a boot scoop, which is like no, no larger than like a chest of drawers drawer um, and a locker. Uh, you might get two lockers, but you'll probably just have one locker. Um, and that's enough to put, and it's got like some smaller drawers in it. So you'll probably have like your, you know, your under, enough of your underwear, uh, your uniform, um, some civilian clothing, all that sort of stuff. Um, so on there, it's a bit more tight, but you might find areas, um, like there are other areas on board that you can store stuff. Um, so you just have to, when you get on board, you have to sort of assess your situation, what you got to then bring stuff on. Normally when I come on board, I just bring my, uh, big black grip with all my uniform in it and some civvies and I start with that and then I just build it up um, when I know how much more stuff I can bring on board. Um, the ship I'm on now is a Type 45s, you get quite a lot of storage so uh, I'll have a one large locker for my uniform and it'll have a couple of uh, like holes underneath so I can put like a bags or other shoes and stuff. I'll have a, like a, another shoe drawer if you like so I can put stuff in there and then a boot scoop underneath my bunk. Um, and then in there as well, so you're lying down, it's like a single bed on there, so they are quite big. And you've got a like a drop down drawer, so you can put stuff in there, and then round the side of that, so it's all like just above your knees if you're lying down. On the side of that, you've also got another, so you've got, you've got considerably more um, storage for stuff like personal items and that, which just makes it a bit more comfortable. And you'll find that on bigger ships like 45s, obviously the QE class carriers are just gigantic, so you'll find it like that. But yeah, like I said, it's literally go on with your grip first and see how much space you got and build from there because um, you don't want to come in with too much stuff, basically. It's just, you, you'll just become overwhelmed, especially when if you get crash drafts and you go somewhere else or you have to move, you know, getting all that stuff around is quite the task. And believe me, I've been up and down the country and many other sailors have as well, been up and down the country with loads of bags and it is just really annoying. Unless you've got a car, then it, the car just sort of becomes your, well, you live out your car basically <laughs> okay so the final question question number seven highs and lows of my naval career i'm just gonna i can't remember what the question was but i'm just gonna say naval career so far so highs and lows i definitely have had highs and lows um we'll start with the lows so i find periods where i'm not on board um really boring so because obviously you're not doing your job you're not doing what you signed up for and you're not going away you're not doing everything that the adverts say basically over a period of time it gets really boring and you end up just you know you, you end up going out most nights spending your money and you're just like what am i doing sort of stuff and um yeah i just i don't like it and i have had low periods where i'm like you know what well i've had periods of time where nothing really was going on i was held um on shore for a while and i was like this is you know not for me um, fun story, I put my notice in once, <laughs> not now, I'm still in, but I put my notice in once and the day after they told me I was going on deployment, so that was great for me. I was like, yeah, absolutely, that's awesome. Um, and I went on deployment and it was just class, it was really good. We did a, uh, a nice trip and we went out and saw some nice places and um, I had a really good time. Literally, like you see on the adverts, just with your mates, going out and you know, witnessing new things, seeing new things and experiences, um, it was just great. Uh, so yeah, so just not doing my job or not being on a ship is the low part for me. Um, you know, if you've been on a ship for ages and you're doing back-to-back -back sort of ship time, sometimes being alongside for a little while, maybe two months max is like, 
uh, you know, good for me. So it's just enough time just to settle down for a bit and then go straight back out. It's like a little holiday, but you're at work still. Um, but yeah, highs literally any time where I'm on the, on the ship and going to see. People will call me throbbing, but that's what I joined up to do. Um, especially when we're doing like weapon series and lugging around ammunition boxes and all that sort of stuff, you feel quite cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I said, people will probably comment on this and say, mate, you're an absolute throbber. But and by throbber, for you guys, it means someone who loves his job too much or is just a bit too bit too much. Um, but no, I really do enjoy it. everything, just getting stuck in, absolutely love it. Um, and anything, so traveling to new places, Gibraltar you'll find is really good when you guys eventually get in, um, you'll just enjoy it. So any type of chance you can get to go there, just try and get on there. Um, and yeah, it's just literally seeing new places, even if it's like not very, you know, you you most of the time you'd be like, I, I would have never gone on holiday here, like I've been to Dubai. Like, you know, you see that as like a big expensive holiday trip, but no, it's I've been, been there. I've been to bloody Abu Dhabi, I've been to, you know, um, bloody Bahrain, Gibraltar, all that sort of stuff is, you know, it's nice and you know people have gone far east you know australia singapore all that sort of stuff so it's definitely possible within the navy you just got to get on the right ship and you know you, it might be happening soon sooner than you think anyway um so yeah there have definitely been highs and lows you just got to embrace it all like i said it's a lifestyle you know in in your life now there's been highs and lows so even in this job not job sorry in this lifestyle the navy or any armed forces there is going to be that um aspect as well Okay, so that wraps up today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope they answer your questions. Keep commenting uh, in the in the comments box below and I will answer. If, if your questions weren't featured in today's video, then I probably have already answered them. So just have a look and see if I've done that. Um, thanks again for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, we've passed 900 subscribers now and I'm well, like super happy about that. I didn't think that was gonna happen so fast. Literally like in the past 28 days, like what plus like 60 odd and um, I'll put the stats up on the screen um, but yeah I think it's still like 80 odd percent people haven't subscribed to this video so please just drop it a subscribe let's get up to 1000 and uh, let's just build this community together that we're doing now we're doing really well we've got 900 people watching in on this and uh, answer each other's questions you never know when you join you might meet these people and you would be like hey did you watch that video because it's definitely happened I've seen people around and they say hey you guys from the video and I was like yeah, yeah no. and anyway so please drop the video a like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. See you later.